Can AI replace doctors? We rely a lot on AI today. You have to feed in good data. After some times, there are a lot of AIs which become self-learning. It can start neural networks of its own, and it becomes much more smarter in its work. Namaskar. I'm Dr. Rohit Shetty, Chairman Narai Naitrovya. Can AI replace doctors? Can AI be a better doctor than a human presence? It's a very important question which all of us, whether you are in the profession of medicine or a non-medicals, should know because we rely a lot on AI today. We rely on AI to make our voice modulation. We rely on AI to pick up, make our graphs. We rely on AI for everything. So why not medicine? Medicine is where the AI is going to be tremendously beneficial. But I want to start this with a big disclaimer about AI with all the hype around. There's a very nice saying with, with quotes, garbage in, garbage out. That means you feed garbage to AI, it will give you garbage out. AI for me is like educating a child, a child you keep feeding the good information. The child reaches 10 standard. He becomes a good, intelligent kid, becomes 12, goes for. At some point of time, he starts relearning things, which is conditioned from his childhood. He becomes better. He becomes smarter. He becomes more smarter, more smarter, more smarter. AI is exactly the same thing. You have to feed in good data. After some times, AI, there are a lot of AIs which become self-learning. It starts becoming thinking, it starts neural networks of its own, and it becomes much more smarter in its work. So what is important is to teach AI the right way. We're not too close in uh, having a AI drug doctor, but AI has a huge role in its medicine. Where it's used, I'll use five points to describe this with the five alphabets. A, AI helps in, help in accurate diagnosis many times. It helps the doctor to pinpoint diagnosis which probably would have been missed. Probably. That means in very difficult situation, AI is like your partner. Just say, okay, let's look at this. Because it's getting, it's, it has an unbiased, no emotion driven way to diagnose. B, you help to better diagnose in cases where you have challenges because of multiple complexities of many, many things involved. Means your genetics, your lifestyle, your multi-organ changes. All this has a huge role in uh, how you make a diagnosis. So it may help you in that. Customized treatment helps to plan treatments based on, in the future, based on your your not just your blood report or how you what you've been diagnosed and your lifestyle changes, your gen genomics, genetics way of uh, treating you. You're changing how your lifestyle will change, the epigenetics, all that can be planned. D is for drug development and uh, you know looking at how each drug will differ. So we're looking at drugs which can which is very targeted for your disease. And also help in developing drugs which can be a modern way of treating uh, you know of treating the disease which the AI can help you okay this population needs this kind of a drug which you can develop with the pharmaceutical industry and take it forward E is for epidemiology epidemiology is how a geographical location of people in a particular uh, state or a particular village have a different type of challenges to a particular diseases based on their their food, the water, the pesticides. We don't know what. So we need epidemiological data, which is fed into uh, the big data analytics, and that can help us to give the uh, give the diagnosis, and uh, it can help us to predict better. I'm sure a day will come when it will become very smart very very smart 
where it can even try to tell you how you can operate, how you can use a robotic arms or robotic skill to treat and operate without any complication. I'd be really happy to see that day. Thank you.